it's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video today I'm going to show you a really nice tool first I want to say thank you to all the subscribers out there on YouTube I really appreciate it by you subscribing and liking my videos it really supports me doing what I'm doing and keeping going with it also thank you so much to the patrons over at patreon I really appreciate your support I just can't put into words how much I appreciate that and that you enjoy what I'm doing and that you appreciate what I'm doing if you do enjoy this video, please subscribe, like, you know, click the little bell if you want to get notifications when I make new videos. Uh, it means a lot to me. It tells YouTube that I'm doing the right things, and I really appreciate that. Let's get into Snapdrop. So if you've never used an iPhone or Mac OS X uh, together, then you may not know what AirDrop is, but if you talk to anybody who runs a Mac-based shop or an Apple kind of shop, they'll tell you that AirDrop is one of the greatest tools that they've ever used because it lets you basically share files very quickly with other people on the network and all you have to do is go into AirDrop and drag a file onto it on a Mac or in an iPhone hit share go to the AirDrop section and pick a person or pick a machine and share it and it just goes and it shows up on their machine very quickly and then it tells them hey you've got a file that somebody wants to share with you you can accept it you can decline it it's a super super simple way to share all kinds of things uh, video files, photo files, text files, it doesn't really matter, it just shares files. It's really, really great and, and it's very simple whenever you're in close proximity with somebody else with an Apple device. That being said, it is a closed ecosystem to use AirDrop. Uh, Apple doesn't let that work with Windows, they don't let it work with Linux, they don't let it work with Android, it is Apple to Apple only and it's it's just it's their thing and, and it stays their thing. So. Uh, this GitHub project is called Snapdrop. Uh, Robin Linus is the originator of it, and he has come up with a really great thing that he, he has made that is really cross-platform, so it works from a browser, which is awesome, using WebRTC, which is awesome, and it runs in Docker, and you can self-host it. It's free, and it's open source, so that's even more awesome. So I want to get into it. There is some great information here on his site, um, on, on the GitHub site, so of course I'll link this in the, in the, in the description and in the show notes so you guys can get to it but for the installation portion you want to come down to the local development area here and it's just these three commands uh, really it's that simple now I have to do a little something special in this machine I'm going to install it on but I'll tell you why so I'm going to just copy this git command and back here in my terminal I have SSH over into my server that I run here at my house so this is on my home network this is not DigitalOcean this is not AWS not Linode anything like that this is just a, a machine I run here I'm going to paste that command in, and if you need to paste into the Linux terminal, it's Control, Shift, and V, like Victor. So it makes it pretty easy to paste in there. I'm going to hit Enter, and that's going to pull down that repository, and it creates a file folder that is called Snapdrop. So we can see that right here. So our next step is CD Snapdrop. And we can do LS. Yes, everything's there. I'm going to clear it so you can see what's on the terminal a little bit easier. And we have a docker-compose.yaml file, so this is the file that we want. So we're going to just uh, take a quick look at this uh, because I need to change the ports that are in it. So he's pulling down Node, and he's using the LTS Alpine Linux uh, version of Node, so that's great. And then he's pulling down the other container, which is Nginx, and he's, he's just uh, using Nginx with OpenSSL. And that's so that you can run this on your local network with SSL. Um, he's got some instructions here on the GitHub page, but we're actually going to use uh, Nginx Proxy Manager. And we're going to go ahead and give ourselves a URL, and we're going to set everything up. So I'll explain kind of how I did that as well. So as we go down, we get to the ports that he's setting up right here. And I just need to change these, so I'm going to make this uh, 8082. And I'm going to make this 2443 so that I have, uh, these are open ports. Remember, the left side is the host, the right side is the container. You really shouldn't mess with the right side unless you know what you're doing. But the left side you can change to match what's open on your host machine. So on my host machine, I believe both of these are open for me to use right now. All right, so I'm going to save this with Control-O. And then I'm going to hit Y, or I'm going to hit Enter to save the file with the same name. And I'm going to use Control-X to exit out of Nano there. And now I'm going to do docker compose. Now, a little special thing I have to do because what I did was I went to go look at Redash, which I did not like, by the way. Uh, much, much more difficult than Metabase, in my personal opinion. Um, and Metabase is really awesome, is getting better every day. So, um, But I went to go look at Redash, and when I pulled down Redash, I used the Redash docker compose file. And it basically created what I can surmise as a project file. And no matter where I run Docker Compose from now, 
for whatever reason, it tries to open everything with the redash docker compose file. So I've gone and gotten rid of that folder, but it still wants to try and do that, and it gives me an error. So I got to figure out how to get rid of that project file, and it's probably going to name this stuff redash for some weird reason. But normally, you would just do exactly this command right here, which is docker compose up, and then dash d means run it as a daemon, which means keep it running in the background. I just have to do a little something special, so if you have this problem, problem maybe it'll help you. Uh, but I say dash F, which means run a special file, and I tell it I want this docker compose file here in this folder, and then I'll say up dash D. So I'm just doing a little extra. So it's still docker compose up dash D, but I'm telling it, but use this docker compose.yaml file. Don't go use the one that's in that project folder. Um, so I'm going to hit enter. It's going to go out and it's going to get node LTS Alpine, which is what we wanted. And then it's going to go out and it's going to download everything we need for that. So we'll just give it a second. Okay, so that didn't take very long. It went out and got node and it got Nginx. But as you can see, just like I thought, it gave it a redash prefix for whatever reason. I don't know why it keeps doing that, but it makes me despise redash. <laughs> It's not Redash's fault, honestly, it's my lack of knowledge of Docker Compose and how to get rid of this stupid project file, but at least I know that those two things are running. So we can just do a quick CTOP here and we can see that it's actually out there running. So there they are, Nginx and Node. They're just called Redash, so that's fine. And you can see all my other stuff that's running. So now, just to test that everything is running the way we expect, we can go out to 192.168.7.125, which is the IP address of that machine, 8082 is what I set. And there it is. It comes up and it gives you this really nice, simple interface. Now, this is running in Firefox. I'll tell you now, if you want this to work with iOS once we do all of the SSL stuff that we need to do, you need to run this from Chrome or Chromium. For whatever reason, Firefox did not want to work nicely with my iOS devices, but that's neither here nor there. So this, this came up, and this is what the, the site should look like. So it's kind of telling you, hey, here's, here's the site running. Um, so I'm going to, real quick, go back, and we're going to set up our um, Nginx Proxy Manager site. So what we want to do is open up Nginx Proxy Manager. You're going to go into your hosts, and you're going to click on Add a New Host, and we're going to give it a name. Now, I'll tell you what I did. So I'm going to go out here to DigitalOcean because I have a uh, special URL that I use for home. And I'm going to quickly log into my Bitwarden here. And then I'm going to go over here to sign in because on DigitalOcean, no, I don't want DigitalOcean, I want GoDaddy. don't know why I'm trying to log into DigitalOcean. We don't need DigitalOcean, we need GoDaddy. So on GoDaddy, I set up a URL a long time ago that I use for accessing things on my home network. So I still need Bitwarden, which is good. And I will log in. And we're going to come down to my site here, which is routemehome.org, and I'm going to go to DNS and show you what I set up. So if you ever want to do this, you can. So if you just need like a way to get new addresses to go to a specific IP address, what you do is go to your DNS settings and you create an A record with the asterisk and then you put in the IP address that you want it to go to. So this would be the IP address of my home. And the asterisk says anything that comes in that's not otherwise defined with another A record down here. So if I type in something, as long as it's not one of these things, it's going to go to my home IP address. If I want to specify an IP address specifically for a URL, then I need to come put in a specific A record for that URL. So that's how I set that up. So it's just an asterisk and then put in the IP address you want it to go to and make sure it's an A record and then I could type in boo 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 dot route me home dot org and it's still going to go to my home IP address. But when it gets here, Nginx Proxy Manager is going to try to handle it and if it doesn't have an entry, it's going to say, I don't know what to do with that and too bad, you're not going to get anywhere. So we'll call this drop dot route me home dot org so that Nginx Proxy Manager knows what it's looking for. Make sure after you type something in, you either hit enter or you hit tab to make sure it's uh, selected as that uh, item. And then I'm going to put in the Docker container IP address here, not the IP address of the machine and not localhost because it doesn't see it as localhost. So I'm going to go back to my terminal and I'm going to quit out of CTOP here. 
and we're going to do uh, if config you can also do ip address show depending on what you're using and what i'm looking for here is my docker zero uh, right here and here's the ip address that i want to use so i'm just going to copy that with Control shift c in the terminal and then back over here i'm going to paste that in and it's 82 or no 8082 and then i need to set up web sockets so i need to turn on web sockets make sure you check this box when you do this now i'm going to hit save and i should have drop.routemehome.org so we can click it and it goes to the right page excellent we, we see that that's working now we're going to go back in here and we're going to edit so we just want to make sure that just the the plain site works before we go into too much trouble now we're going to do the same thing we're going to go to the second tab here that says custom locations we're going to hit add a location and we're just going to type it in again drop.routemehome.org make sure you check your spelling here we're going to check uh, <laughs> here we're going to choose https and we're going to put in that same ip address and we're going to put in 8082 again so we've got the same same port we're going to go over here to ssl I'm going to say request a new SSL certificate, force SSL. I'm going to enter my email address right here. And then I'm going to check the little box that says I agree to the Let's Encrypt Terms of Service. And I'm going to hit save. We're just going to wait for a few seconds while it goes out and let's Let's Encrypt do the challenge. And as long as we don't get an error, everything should have worked. So now if I go to this and click it, it should open up in a tab and I should have my little lock icon. So I do. That's awesome. So right now, and if you look at this, it's not zoomed in very well. So let me zoom it up for you. But if you look down here, it gave my machine here just a, a random name, Turquoise Viper. So that's the machine that I'm currently on accessing this page. So I'm going to zoom back out a little bit. I'm going to open up my iPhone here. And I'm going to pull down real quick and start recording. And I'm going to go into my browser on my iPhone. And I'm going to type in drop dot route me home dot org and you see my iPhone shows up immediately as soon as I load the page here it is now this is the name of my iPhone my iPhone also sees my machine so I'll have the uh, recording of the iPhone screen overlaid so you can see that now I'm going to touch the machine on my iPhone screen so I actually touch that little dot there that has the machine name and I'm going to say take a photo or video and I'm going to go here and I'll just take a picture of the screen and my microphone. And then I'm going to say use photo. And you can see it's trying to load something. So it sees something coming in. So this is actually working on Firefox, which excites me. That's awesome. Uh, and it comes up. So I'm going to say download. And it's called image.jpg. So I'm going to download it. And I'm going to say save. Now we'll just open it with the image viewer. Yeah, why not? There we go. And there's the picture I just took with the phone. And now you can see it here on the desktop. And all I did was send it over. Now, it can go the other direction as well. I can click on the phone. And I can say, let's go find something in pictures. Yeah, bat.png. So it's going to send it over to my phone. And on my phone, it pops up. And it says, hey, somebody just sent you something. Do you want to download or ignore it? I'm going to download it. And I'm going to download it. And now I can go into my files, and you'll see that I've done this before because I've been practicing to get this right um, for you guys. So I'm going to open up files, and I'm going to go here. So you see the old one, but you see the one that I just sent at 7.34 p.m., and if I tap it, it opens up, and there's the picture of the bat. So this is Snapdrop. This is how it works. Now I could also do this with laptops. I could do this with any other machine on my network as long as I go to this URL, they're going to show up on the screen and I'm going to be able to see what's going on. Now, I'm going to go back to my browser and I'm going to close this tab. And I'm going to kill my browser on my phone. Now, I'm going to take my phone off of Wi Fi. So I'm going to pull this down and I'm going to tap the little Wi Fi symbol. It says disconnecting nearby Wi Fi until tomorrow. Yeah, that's fine. So now I should just be on lte.org. When I type in the, the URL correctly, there we go, it shows back up. So this is working even over the internet. I'm not even on my Wi-Fi anymore, and it's still connecting me. So I could drop things over the internet as well. Now, 
There is no security around this, so you guys have the drop.routemehome.org website. You could use this as well to share things with all kinds of crazy people, and if you all got on it, you would all see your machines on it. You might kill my server. I'm going to turn this off when I'm done. So now you've got this drop, this snap drop that's open up to the internet, but you want to secure it. So the next thing you want to do is go make sure you've got an access list set up. So you click on the access list inside of Nginx Proxy Manager, and we're going to add a, a new access list. We'll just give it a name. So for me, this is home. So I'm just going to put in home. And then I want to say satisfy any condition that's set. Authorization is my username and my password for Nginx Proxy Manager, which is fine. You could add others if you want to have that or if you want to have other people have their own access. And then the access list, I'm going to put my home IP address and I'm going to put dot zero slash 24. So that means basically any IP that has 192.168.7 and then the last thing can be any number. So I'm going to put save. So now I've got this rule and then here we've got that access control list. So we want to go back to our hosts and I want to go to our proxy hosts. We're going to go here and just make sure it's selected. It should be, I, I was doing this last night and just messed up. So we'll just edit real quick. It does say home. So we're set. Now when you come in, it may be set on public. You just want to go down and now change that to the access control list you've put hit save and now when you click on that URL it's going to take you back to your site but now you're going to get this authentication prompt and you see here it's already got mine filled in but if it doesn't have it filled in you would type in those credentials that you put for the authorization level and once you hit OK it's going to load up so now I've got my page loading up where I can again get back to it so that is Snapdrop really really easy to install really easy to use I really like this project. It's really great and it's coming along and it's got active development, which is awesome. If you guys enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us. And I'll talk to you next time.